you last in on how life has changed for you so far? Uh, I would say my life has never been the same again. Uh, I think because of um, the position that I'm in, there is a responsibility to ensure that you know the work that I've done is continuous and that I don't stop. But at the same time, there's been very limited resources, so I just try and make do with what I can. I'm not going to change the world just like on my own, but I'm sure that you know, with if I can tell, if I can convey the importance of like being involved to other people, then I hope that more people will step forward in future. Um, what I've been busy with, um, basically, we've been running um, a, cu a couple of community initiatives in McPherson. Uh, not because I'm here to like reserve the ground for 2016. I don't think that there's any like political motivation in that, but really because we identify an issue and we are just here to solve it. And what we are doing is on a very small scale compared to what a lot of other non-profit or community organizations have done in McPherson in the past. In terms of work, um, I have very strict ground rules. Like I cannot let political activities interfere with work. So um, I don't have any like speaking engagements during the weekdays and everything's been like kept to the weekends only. So work is a priority for me at this point, but it doesn't mean that I want to give up what I'm doing on the side. It's just that I just need to learn how to manage that. Improving the TF, the TFR is a really great idea. I mean, that's a lot of what the other, even Pauline Strawn um, commented on it as well and said that, you know, you need to do that. But then again, that's a very long-term kind of plan that you need to enforce and you won't be able to see the results so quickly. So I think in the short term, um, yes, you can bring foreigners, but the question is how much is too much? And if it comes to the point where it's eroding our social infrastructure, to the point where you have like, you know, overpriced housing, not enough housing, where you have like public transport breaking down, people losing confidence and feeling insecure about even going about their daily lives, then I think you have an issue and I think that's where the numbers need to be kept. But I'm not saying that we should completely stem the inflow of foreigners into this country because, let's face it, you know, we do need them to a certain extent. But it's also a matter of how much is too much. Are there any plans for you to settle down? Nope. <laughs> not in the meantime. Um, I haven't really thought about that because I've just been so busy. I think um, I just... When it comes, it will come. Yeah. I think it's a very different set of challenges because I think, okay, social media is just part of the mix. I'm not saying there's everything. But what it's done is that um, it's forced a lot of politicians to be extra careful or extra, account extra um, or give extra accountability to what they say or do. And I think that's placed a lot of pressure. So I really hope that this doesn't deter potential leaders from stepping up to you know, come into the public arena to serve. Uh, I think that's one thing. The second thing is um, there's going to be very high expectations from the electorate, not just for the PAP, perhaps even higher for the PAP because they are an incumbent, but for the opposition as well, I think voters are going to ask, you know, what have you done or what can you offer us? And I think um, voters are going to be a lot more clear about what they want in the years ahead. Um, the third thing is, I really hope this doesn't happen, but you might see the increase of uh, three cornered fights. Yeah, so um, I think, I mean, I hope that when push comes to shove, when the elections come around in 2016, um, there will still be that round table discussion. People will still be cordial enough to know when to give way and when to like muscle in. The online code of conduct, there's been a lot of uh, talk about, you know, what the rules will be or the guidelines will be. What's your take on it? The internet is a very organic entity. It's not some, and it's very bottom up. So it's not something that you can easily enforce like, um, you know, a set of rules and boundaries and hope that people keep to it. I don't think it's going to be very effective. But that's it. I do think that, you know, the growing like negativity, negative energy online, um, all that xenophobia and all that, it's really dangerous for us as well. But then again, that boils down to education. So education in the schools, you know, is there, are you going to teach kids about internet etiquette and all that? Um, and even online, you know, there needs to be more people coming in to like really moderate the tone. And I do think that there's a silent mi majority out there who's just quietly reading the comments, um, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call myself silent majority online. Um, silent majority reading the comments, um, not taking part in the discussions, but I'm sure that if they were to come out and give their two cents worth, it would dilute the, the extreme minority that has been voicing out online. And I think it's just a matter of time because uh, let's not forget that, you know, Singapore, our political landscape is still maturing. It wasn't like in the past where, you know, we didn't have the outlet to express ourselves. So I think with this, right, you just have this like, these what you call early adopters coming out to like give a lot of 
comments and feedback. But I'm sure in time to come, you know, things will balance out. You will have more moderate voices online.